These are $1,300 Levi's from the 1960s. The denim is fluffy, the hems look like rope, and this is also the year that Levi's cheaped out. These are supposedly exact replicas from Levi's of those jeans, and they now sell for $260. And these are just regular old boring Levi 501s that sell for $80. Everyone says Levi's quality went downhill. They don't make them like they used to, and that's true in some ways. But in other ways, these $80 jeans are built better. So today is a certified Gina Palooza. Hello everyone, it's Michael. It's a beautiful fall day. I'm feeling fantastic. And if these jeans could talk, the story that they would tell from probably being worn on the day humanity watched the first man ever land on the moon to now being in my Brooklyn apartment where I was smelling them to see if I could detect signs of natural indigo versus synthetic indigo. I couldn't, by the way. For my entire life, I have heard the phrase they don't make this like they used to. Levi's, Carhartt, Eddie Bauer, everything is not made like it used to be made. So I would like to put all of that to the test, if you don't mind. I made a new friend. I don't know if he wants me to say his name online, but we buy old jeans at gmail.com. Email him if you have old jeans or anything of the likes. He'd love to buy them. He is a vintage Levi's, Wrangler, Carhartt, whoever it may be, reseller, and he gets the craziest pieces that I have ever seen. We will begin with the smallest detail first and then get to the big baddies like stitching, like denim quality, if one is actually stronger. All that we'll get into in a second. But first, there are some small differences. Nothing that you'd really notice, honestly. The 60s was a point where leather patches at Levi's were already kind of out the door. They reintroduced them on their modern premium line, but I actually really like the patches that they use now. All of these patches are called paper patches, but they are not actually paper and they are not cardboard. They are made out of Jacron, J-A-C-R-O-N. It was made in the 60s but now it is being looked into as an alternative for plastic materials in general because it does biodegrade over time. Jacron is an extremely strong mix of cellulose fibers, like in plants, and natural rubber. At least Levi says it's natural rubber, not synthetic. Jacron patches hold ink better. They hold up for a pretty long time, but leather patches hold up for a much longer time. For example, this is the patch from the 60s, and then this is a patch from original Levi's from like the 1800s. Next up is the Arcuit. This does not affect the durability of the jeans at all, but if you pay attention here, there'll be something you notice at the end when we're talking about stitching. The 1960s jeans, it looks like it was done by hand. It's not totally even. One side is lifted a little higher, and it looks like the LVC line, the vintage recreation, tried to do something similar, but in a more machined way. I don't think that's done by hand. And then obviously, of course, the shape on the modern ones is perfectly symmetrical. Nothing is out of place. It's exactly even, I bet, between a thousand pairs of jeans. There is so little variation between that design you can't even notice. Correction, after thinking about this for three more seconds, they were all done by machine, but I think Levi's changed the pattern over time. Sorry about that. Two things about fit for the 1960s jeans. The second one is the really weird fact I don't understand, but the first one, vanity sizing in the 60s, not a thing. So the same size back then was smaller than it is today. The really weird thing though, which to be honest, I have no idea why Levi's did this and maybe other brands did it too at the time, is the jeans are two inches shorter than the length that is on the back tabs. Okay, and to finally, to wrap up the small section, Number one, you've probably heard about this before, the red tab on the back of the 60s jeans and the LBC jeans, that is in capital letters, now it's lowercase, just the L is big, big whoop. The button material between modern Levi's and vintage Levi's changed, the old ones were steel, the new ones are I think a zinc alloy or something of the sorts. But the 60s were really the year that Levi's changed a bunch of things anyways. Before the 1960s, the rivets on Levi's were 100% solid copper, now the front is copper, the back is aluminum. Cheaped out a little bit, Levi's, didn't ya? Okay, anyways, enough with the small crap. Let's get serious. Let's stop talking about cellulose and rubber, whatever that stuff is. Let's talk about if these jeans are actually better and go over the big boy details. This is a refurbished MacBook Pro, or at least I think it is. I have not opened the box yet, so therefore I have no idea what's in here. And if someone said to me, Michael, you should eat whatever is in the box, I would say, are you crazy? I have no idea what's inside of this. So why do you take vitamins when you don't know what's inside of them? This video is sponsored by Ritual, your favorite vitamin's favorite vitamin. I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat, and people often call me a rabbit. But listen to this, I don't know a single rabbit that has eaten exclusively raviolis for the past three years, like I have. I am probably deficient in whatever nutrients don't come in raviolis, bran flakes, and pesto. And that's where multivitamins come in. But I already have multivitamins, Michael. I don't need different ones. Uh, well, you need high quality traceable ones, I would assume. For example, the ingredients in my vitamin come from Utah, New Jersey, Illinois, Canada, Switzerland, Norway, Argentina, 
Argentina, the UK, and Italy. So no, I'm not just gonna eat whatever is in this box. I'm gonna make sure I know where every single ingredient is from, and you should do the same thing with your vitamins. Thank you so much, Ritual, for sponsoring this video. You can use my code IRONSNAIL30 to save 30% off your first month's order. Stitches per inch. Usually higher is better. That's not true in every single scenario. There's also different ways to have very strong garments. But when we are comparing the 1960 Levi's to the modern ones, the 1960 ones, for the most part, have a higher stitches per inch count everywhere. And I believe on modern premium Levi's, that is where you get an equivalent amount of stitches per inch as vintage. LVC Levi's for almost $300 seem to come close or be exactly the same. So 0.1 for 1960s Levi's. I don't know what this hand. Okay, so if Levi's corporate is watching this, I, have, I promise that modern day Levi's have a comeback at the end. But right now, another point goes to 1966 and LVC jeans because the pocket bags, the bags that you put things in your pockets sin. They're made out of a much beefier, heavier material that they lasted from the 60s to today. I don't think modern Levi's would, although these vintage jeans have not been worn a ton. They are, in general, it's just a better, beefier material than what we're using today. I decided to stare into the sun directly for this part because it's gonna get pretty shady. Obviously, the 1966 Levi's use selvage denim, the modern ones do not, and the LVCs use selvage denim from Japan. The original Levi's from the 60s used denim from Cone Mills, which is the most famous US manufacturer of denim of all time. So it was a really big deal when they went out of business. Levi's didn't save them. I don't know if they could have, but they didn't either way. Also, 100% yes, I do feel like I am walking around in paradise right now, although we cannot forget, moments ago, I saw a man facing the wrong way in a porta potty. Oh, oops, I cut this part, but right before this video started, I walked in on a man facing the wrong way in a porta potty, which was, you know, Weird. So very quickly, let's compare shuttle looms to projectile looms, the modern looms that we use today. Shuttle looms are four times slower than projectile looms. They also produce denim half width. So modern denim is like 60 inches, selvage denim is like 30 inches. Each yard of denim makes less jeans and is more expensive. So Levi's switched to projectile looms, which can literally print denim out. It is incredibly fast. The real benefit of selvage denim now in modern days is that it's pretty. It looks like the actual denim is finished and you didn't do a messy stitch over it to make sure it doesn't unravel or anything like that. What really matters is a lot of these old machines couldn't make perfect denim like we can make today. The denim back then was a lot prettier, but that does not necessarily mean it was more durable. It could actually be less durable than the robotic denim made today. Except, interestingly, vintage denim used longer cotton fibers that take longer to grow and are also stronger because there's more friction when they are all wound together tight, when modern fabric is meant to be grown really fast so it uses shorter fibers, which are not as strong. So there's a push and pull either way, so durability of the denim without extensive testing that I can't do on the vintage Levi's is TBD. All three of these jeans are unsand fried. That means they were not treated for shrinkage at all. They will shrink up to 10% when you wash them for the first time. And you'll notice the leg twist on the vintage Levi's is insane. The leg has almost completely rolled over to the other end, which does not happen with LVCs. You can get some leg twists, but it's moderate, and it barely happens at all with modern Levi's. Is there any place in modern Levi's that beats vintage Levi's? Yes, it is called bar tacking. Bar tacking has been around for a while now. In the 60s, it was not around for that long. And you'll see there's rivets, obviously, on the front part of your pants. They used to also be on the back pockets because that is what set Levi's apart. That is what made their jeans so strong. It wasn't just stitching that could rip apart easily. It was riveted like a boat. It was super strong. You couldn't pull them apart with two horses. Technology and stitching in general got better and the bar tack was invented, which is equivalent, essentially, to the rivet. So the rivets on the front of your pants that you are wearing right now, they're decorative. You could just bar tack those. Uniqlo does a lot of bar tacking and not a lot of riveting. But with all that being said, these vintage 60s Levi's were some of the first Levi's that had bar tacks on the back pockets instead of rivets. And the bar tacking is, it was just not as robust as it was today. You'll see that the bar tack on modern Levi's goes all the way through the top of the jean to the bottom. And on vintage, I think they skipped a layer of denim because they didn't have a machine that could go through all of that denim. Correction and or edit. You'll notice that the belt loops are all bar tacked all the way through. So I think it's more possible that Levi's hid the bar tack for style, although it is not as durable. A pair of Levi's in the 1960s went for $8. Adjusted for inflation today, that is just about $80, which I did not expect it to be exactly the same price as they are today. It looks like they adjusted perfectly for inflation over time. Same thing with Wranglers. I think they went for $5 today, that gets to $50 or close to there. Exactly the same. Not the same thing with Filson. Filson 
technically by inflation should be $124. But I will say Filson did stay in the US and I am making clothes in the US right now. It is very expensive, so I can't actually comment on that. That being said, in order to get that price, Modern Levi's moved production to Mexico and Egypt and different countries where the cost of labor was lower. They did the same with the production of the denim. I'm assuming they used a lower grade of cotton fiber in general. There's a lot of things that they had to change in order to keep Levi's for $80. And with that being said, Levi's, there's usually some sale going on. So I would say in the US at least, it's like $50 or $60. And I obviously think they could be priced a lot lower than what you are actually buying them for now because marketing and everything goes into that price and it goes up and people want to make more money but I will say frankly the difference in quality between modern and vintage and durability as well is not as much as you probably would think all of the things that I really like the charming things on vintage Levi's don't necessarily make them a better jean they make them a cooler jean in my opinion but modern technology has essentially got us to the level of perfected denim and without all the faults that vintage denim has modern denim can hold up to a similar strength even if it is of lesser quality on the inside. Do they make Levi's like they used to? The answer has to be no. So that is the end of the first part of this series, but now I have a question for you. In my apartment, I have Vintage Wrangler, one of the first ever down jackets from Eddie Bauer, and Vintage Carhartt. What should I compare next?